Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. So today we're going to be looking at the polling data from a number of days. Considering that I don't want to make individual videos for Saturday, then Sunday, then Monday. Today is Wednesday, October 31st. Happy Halloween, everyone. Uh, besides the point, we're looking at a lot of data today. We're going to go through a number of days and we're going to get a lot of information very quickly. I'm trying to condense this video because I have to go out <clears throat> and be somewhere today. So I'm trying to make this uh, as efficient and as quick as possible. So we start off in Saturday, on Saturday, October 27th, uh, with the Michigan Senate poll that shows Debbie Stabenow leading plus 6%. That is uh, pretty different than what the results that we have been seeing, but Stabenow's numbers have stayed the same. That's a point to point out. Uh, Stabenow's numbers have always been around this margin. It's just that John James's numbers have gone up. Sure, her peak was 56, but 54 in the most recent poll that shows her leading by 13 isn't necessarily the worst thing. Yes, there were better double digits before, single down, two single digits, and then went back up to double digits, but still a plus seven point lead in plus six point lead sorry in a trump state from 2016 isn't the worst thing missouri senate race josh hawley leads by four percent claire mccaskill behind right now according to this poll overall claire mccaskill is behind by two percent and has been since the beginning of august or mid-august when all of a sudden josh hawley took the lead and claire mccaskill is at a point where she could recover because a lot of these polls uh, are done by the same polling source missouri scout missouri scout missouri scout missouri scout missouri scout seeing that a lot a Fox News also comes here, but no real New York Times. We haven't seen any New York Times poll or Rasmussen Reports poll here. Uh, so once we start getting more important polls from a number of these races and more, I guess, uh, trustable polls, then we'll actually relook look at these races uh, intently. Michigan governor race. Uh, right now, Bill Schuette is losing by, to Gretchen Whitmer by 5%. Nothing real to see there. Illinois 6th District, the Democrat leads by 2. Uh, Pennsylvania 10th, the Republican leads by 2. And then in Utah's 4th, which shouldn't be contested for the Democrats, um, Sorry, shouldn't be contested for the GOP is now a tie in that race. In the Indiana Senate race, Mike Braun versus Joe Donnelly versus Brenton. Mike Braun leads by 3%. I believe this may be the most recent poll taken. Actually, it's not. So there's a Fox News poll that came out. Uh, but overall, this poll shows Mike Braun leading by 3%. This is a CBS News poll. Uh, that is some place where if we're looking at the numbers, that doesn't necessarily benefit the Democratic Party, considering that if this is a picker for the GOP, their entire chances of even retaining the numbers they have now is completely shot in the United States Senate. For the Arizona Senate race, though, Kirsten Sinema leads by plus 3%. Florida Senate poll, there's a tie, and then Bill Nelson leads by 4%. Uh, overall, those Senate polls are not showing good numbers for Democrats in Indiana or Florida in that one CBS News poll. But overall, the New York Times poll and then the uh, Arizona poll definitely show good numbers for the Democratic Party, considering that they can hold Florida and pick up Arizona. They can afford to lose North Dakota or not pick up uh, Nevada. But if we're looking at where the Democrats need to retain their numbers, again, they need to focus on certain areas. And right now, they aren't necessarily excelling at it, but they are uh, doing pretty well. Arizona governor race, Doug Ducey leads by 11. Not much to see there. Same numbers we've been seeing before. Florida governor race, Gillum plus one, Gillum plus five. Again, Gillum has consistently led, according to New York Times, CBS News, a number of uh, polling areas, I guess, polling groups. So you can say that Gillum is pretty much in the lead at this point. Iowa 3rd District, this is a race that currently Young led by 16% in one poll, and now Axon plus two. Uh, a really hard race to gauge, but right now, the, the New York Times poll is probably the poll that I would trust the most. New York 11th District, the Democrat loses by 4%. This is a Republican district, if I'm not mistaken. Donovan is, is the incumbent, sorry. Uh, Obama won here, then Trump won here. So that is an area where the Democrats think they could get traditional Democratic voters, uh, but they're not looking too well in the most recent poll. 24th District right now, Siena poll. Uh, New York Times and Siena typically do a uh, poll together, but this one was just strictly for Siena, and it shows the Republican leading by 14%. So we've covered Saturday and Sunday. Saved another long video, condensed down into one. So we're going to start off on Monday, October 29th. A lot of data here. New Jersey Senate race, uh, Bob Menendez leads by plus 5% over Bob Hugan. Definitely narrowing down from before, but still a win is a win in the Democratic Party's book. Again, looking at Texas Senate race, yes, it is narrower than before, and it shows the Democrats they have opportunities in other Republican states. But again, a win is a win. Ted Cruz is probably going to, going to hold on to this race, which of course adds to the GOP numbers. Michigan Senate race, Stabenow plus 9, Stabenow plus 17, going from single digits to double digits in the same day. Overall, the margin is probably going to be around 10% for Debbie Stabenow or 5 to 10%. But again, her numbers have stayed the same. James's numbers have just gone up considering undecided voters have gone down. This is not really a safe Democratic state anymore considering it was at one point. Uh, but not anymore. Martin Heinrich leads, of course, by plus 16%, considering Gary Johnson is taking away from a number of Republican voters. This is the first time where if you add uh, Rich and Johnson's voters together, they'd actually actually 
actually, actually, actually have a point to stand against Martin Heinrich, but unfortunately for them, they do not. Johnson definitely is taking away from Democrats, but still, uh, this is a, a pretty consistent lead. He's going to win by a plurality. When I refer to he, I mean Martin Heinrich, is going to win by a plurality. Massachusetts Senate Warren leads by 22. Nothing really to see there. Neither in the Rhode Island Senate race. Michigan Governor race, Whitmer plus uh, 11. Michigan Governor race, Whitmer plus 12. Texas Governor race, Abbott plus 14. New Mexico Governor, uh, Government government governor uh, grism plus nine that is a pickup for the democratic party rhode island governor raimondo plus 11 that's an improvement ma governor same thing baker plus 39 california 25th district knight leads by four this is a very close race to watch new mexico first democrat leads by 10 new mexico second this is the gop held district a tie uh i believe it's a gop held district uh trump won here by 10.2 percent so i'm assuming so uh then virginia 7th district uh the democrat leads by one new york 27th Republican leads by four. President Trump disapproved plus four. Direction of the country wrong track plus 10. So we have two more days to go, but there's a lot of data from Tuesday. So Florida Senate race, Florida Senate race again. Nelson plus two, Nelson plus one. Obviously, those numbers benefit Bill Nelson considering that he has gone back from where Rick Scott was leading before, over on an average of plus two percent. But there was a point in time where Bill Nelson was behind. So that was late June, uh, leading all the way up into late September. So a very long time he was losing. And then now he has started to lead, uh, but by narrow margins. Looking at the North Dakota Senate race, the, for some reason, this Republican group shows Kevin Kramer behind behind uh, not behind sorry uh less than what he's been leading before in other news uh organizations uh but right now kevin kramer leading by nine percent as the non-incumbent against an incumbent uh in a democratic wave year as a democratic nominee uh right now that is obviously good numbers pick up for the gop if those numbers hold montana senate race uh right now john tester leads by three percent over matt rosendale again this is a race that typically is going to remain in the democratic column ohio senate race has narrowed down to a plus six margin for uh brown over renaki uh, if we're looking at the numbers, Jim Renaki, see whatever, you, however you pronounce it, seems to have gone up in numbers. Uh, right now, Brown has been around the same. So this new poll actually shows him at 49. So he has lost, I guess you could say, five percent of voters. But Brown definitely has gone up more than. Uh, Sorry, Renaki has gone up more than Brown has gone down. We're looking at the Arizona Senate race. Martha McSally is behind by 6%. That definitely adds to the Democratic argument that they possibly could hold on to the number of seats they have now in the Senate. Texas Senate race now going, going even further to the right. Cruz leads by plus 10%. Connecticut Senate race, not much to see there. Typical Democratic state. Murphy leads by plus 15. So we've covered all the Senate races. Uh, good news for Democrats in states except for North Dakota and Texas. Now moving into the governor's races, two Florida governor polls. Gillen plus six, and then Gillen plus one. Again, we're seeing a lot of conflicting data on this race in terms of what the lead is for the Democratic nominee, but no real polls that actually show DeSantis leading except for this one from WCTV TV. And then before earlier on, uh, Gravis said DeSantis would win by three back in July of 2018. So we're looking at the overall number. It's Gillen plus three has moved from lean Democratic to toss up uh, in the most recent data that we've gotten from this race itself. Abrams now leads by one in the most recent Georgia governor poll. Uh, that is very surprising because Considering that Brian Kemp is a Republican Secretary of State, already won a statewide election, Stacey Abrams, sure, she may be known statewide, but she isn't necessarily the favorite to win at this point. Uh, right now, Kemp is actually leading by 1.4% on average, but it's still a toss-up. Uh, but if a Democrat does win this race, she'll be the first female black governor from the state of Georgia. And that will be a lot. That will be uh, a really strong message for the Democratic Party leading into the next House, Governor, Senate, and presidential elections. So if we're looking at Georgia governor race, this is the first poll that's actually showed Abrams leading in a while. Ohio Governor Race Cordray leads by 3% uh, over Mike D1. Mike D1 is a former senator. Cordray has led by 2.7% in all the polls, uh, which is pretty surprising to me considering that that's not really too expected uh, as a Democrat from a state that Trump almost won by double digits back in 2016. But uh, whatever floats Ohio's boat, they can... Um, right now we're looking at the data, and it's pretty surprising to see a Democrat lead, but they are leading. Arizona Governor... Ducey plus 13, Texas Governor, Abbott plus 26, not much to see there. Connecticut Governor, uh, there's a little bit to see there. Lamont leads by 4%, but still Democratic state. Oregon Governor Ray's Brown plus 5. Again, that's a Democratic state, but still contested them before, more contested them before. Kansas Governor, Governor Kobach versus Kelly versus Orman. Uh, right now, the Republican leads by 1%, so still a toss-up race. California Governor Ray's Newsom plus 20, obviously. California 50th, Hunter only leads by 3%, so this was a safe GOP district, now closer because of the indictment of Hunter, uh, but still expected for him to win there kansas second district watkins plus seven that's a little bit closer than it should be kansas third district davids plus 12 is not a good sign for the democrats sorry for the gop uh, montana at large gianforte versus williams tie that is also not good for the gop uh, nc2 the republican only leads by nine percent this is an area where they should be leading by larger than that pa1 uh, republican plus one pa10 
Republican plus three, New York 19, uh, Democrat plus five, and then Utah seventh. Now a poll that actually shows the Democrat ahead by 7%. So now we have a lot of data from Wednesday, October 31st. In fact, actually, you've seen it, but uh, hmm, I'm going to actually see if I should cover it, considering that that's a lot to cover. There's a lot that I could actually talk about, considering it covers a number of races that I do want to discuss. Um, last minute thinking here. Uh, I'm not going to cover it. I'll cover it in a separate video because, uh, yeah, I'm sorry for saying I was going to cover it, but um, a lot of data that you see here, a lot of last-minute polls that have been taken since Saturday, I don't want to bombard it with Wednesday. There's a lot of data there that's going to say a lot about the 20 team midterm elections. I really rushed through a number of these polls because you guys deserve content. I didn't upload yesterday. Um, but overall, if we're looking at Wednesday, I'll probably, if I can't upload tonight again, I'll probably push it off until tomorrow, but with good reason. There is a lot of data there that is going to say a lot about my next coming prediction, which is tomorrow for the 2018 Senate races. Again, beginning of each month. And then, I, like I said, in November, it will be every single day of the month. So every day you'll get an updated 2018 Senate election prediction. Again, that may not be... I guess the most uh, fun thing to watch all the time, but they definitely are interesting. And the way that the race changes in the final week uh, definitely is something to point out. So that pretty much wraps up today's video. Thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I will see you all tomorrow.